guys, welcome to the fourth video in our acid-base equilibrium unit. This video is going to be all about salt solutions and how salt solutions can actually be acidic or basic. This is based out of 16.9 in your book and we've seen that many substances are acidic or basic and we've also discussed how ions can be an acid or a base because it can be a conjugate of a strong acid or a weak acid. What we're going to do now is we're going to examine the way that salts can affect the pH. So if you remember, a salt is an ionic compound produced during an acid-base neutralization reaction. So an ionic compound means that you have to have a metal and a nonmetal, or a positive ion and a negative ion. So all soluble salts, a key word being soluble, that means that it dissolves in water. All soluble salts are strong electrolytes because when you put it into water, it dissociates into its ions. So it's a strong electrolyte that would conduct electricity. Salts can act as Bronsted-Lowry acids or bases. And what we have to do is we have to look at the ions involved to determine if it's acidic or basic. Then the pH of a salt solution really depends on the strength of the salt as an electrolyte. So many ions react with water to create either H plus or OH minus. The reaction with water is called hydrolysis. So what we have to look at when we're looking at the acid base properties of salts is we have to look at how the ion hydrolyzes with water. When you put the ion with water, do you form H plus or do you form OH minus? That tells us if it's an acid or a base. So the acid base properties are due to the reactions of the ions in solution. We have to look at the cation and anion separately when we're determining acidity or basicity. The cation, positive ion, can be acidic or neutral because it comes from either a strong or a weak base. And then the anion of the salt can be acidic, basic, or neutral. And what we have to do is we have to look at where the ions come from. So we're going to start by looking at anions. So anions, if you remember, from strong acids are neutral. So we had HCl. Remember that Cl- is the conjugate base of a strong acid. Therefore, it had negligible basicity. It was not basic at all. So the anion of a strong acid is a neutral base. So Cl- will not react with water because it's neutral. However, anions of weak acids are weak conjugate bases. So again, weak acids have weak bases. So the anions that come from a weak acid, such as acetic acid, creates OH- in water. Makes a basic solution because we have this OH-. Then protonated anions. Protonated anions are anions that have an ionizable proton, such as HSO4-. It is something that is amphoteric. HSO4- can donate a proton or it can accept a proton. So if we have an anion that is amphoteric, we have to check the Ks. If Ka is greater than Kb, that means the acidic side is going to outweigh the basic side. So if Ka is greater than Kb, the anion will be acidic. If Kb is greater than Ka, the anion will be basic. So remember that your K values can be found in Appendix D. In terms of cations now, the strong base cations are neutral. So remember, strong base makes the lowercase b on the periodic table. So any strong base metal cations are neutral. All other cations are weak acids because they come from weak bases. So something such as Al3+, that comes from a weak base. Therefore, it's a weak acid. It's the conjugate acid. And then polyatomic cations are typically conjugate acids as well. So NH4 plus would be considered a weak acid. So if it's not a cation from a strong base, it's going to be a weak acid. Transition metals. Transition metals are a little bit different. They form what are called hydrated cations. So if we take a look at this picture at the bottom, we have iron 3 plus in the center here. And think back to the solvent cages that we looked at when we talked about solutions. That's very similar to what a hydrated cation looks like, except it's actually bonded. So this Fe3 plus is actually bonded to these six waters. That makes this hydrated cation. 
And as we look at cations, it's important to know that the smaller and more highly charged the ion, the stronger the weak acid. Because remember, these are all weak acids in terms of the conjugates. So the smaller and more highly charged ion is going to be the stronger weak acid. So the acidity of a solution can actually qualitatively be predicted. We can use this table. So you definitely want to know this table. If the cation is neutral, the anion is neutral, then the salt will be neutral, like NaCl. Na comes from a strong base, Cl minus comes from a strong acid. Both conjugates are neutral, therefore the salt's going to be neutral. If the cation comes from a strong base and it's neutral, and the anion, give me the conjugate, the conjugate base comes from weak acid, it's going to be weak, a weak base. So therefore, the salt is going to be basic. Now, if your cations come from a weak base, therefore, it's a conjugate, so it's a weak conjugate acid, we can then look at acidic cation, neutral anion, that gives us an acidic salt solution. Then, if both your cation and your anion come from weak acids and weak bases, then the solution depends on the Ka values. So what you have to do is you have to compare the Ka and the Kb. So the Ka of the cation and the Kb of the anion. If the Ka is larger, the solution will be acidic. If the Kb, if the Kb is larger, the solution will be basic. So again, you have to compare the K values. So for example, we're going to look at um, NH4CN. The Kb of Cn minus is larger than the Ka of the ammonium ion. Kb dominates, and again, we're looking at Kb for Cn minus because it's the conjugate base. B for base is stronger than A for acid, so the salt will be basic. And again, we looked at Kb for Cn minus because Cn minus is the conjugate base. We looked at Ka for the ammonium ion because that is the conjugate acid. So just to summarize, with salt solutions, it can be acidic, basic, or neutral. So if you have a group 1 or 2 cation, comes from a strong base with the anion of a strong acid. Both of those conjugates are neutral, therefore the salt is neutral. If you have the cation from a strong base and the anion of a weak acid, okay, remember, you just have to always think about conjugates. Okay, this, okay, we're looking at a cation from a strong base, this is going to be neutral. The anion of a weak acid, this is the conjugate base of a weak acid, therefore it's a weak base. So then the salt will be basic. So just keep in mind as you look through these, uh, this summary, each of these points, you have to keep in mind conjugates.